Uh, this is, Jaeger is the dog that's closer to the camera, and this is Pistol. Now, one of the things I noticed when Jaeger came out is Jaeger is, shows very low confidence and very, a lot of insecurity. He's very timid. Uh, you know, uh, if you notice, he's behind her. She's clearly the dominant dog in this particular group. He just might be just more sensitive dog. But I, I'm very concerned with him uh, because his confidence and self-esteem is so low. Her, I think she's stressed out because she thinks she's in charge of humans. And we're going to talk about how to fix that. Well, one of the things we can do is uh, incorporate some rules and boundaries. Uh, and we'll talk about that off camera. But we can do things to build up their confidence. Jaeger, come. Jaeger, come. So um, one of the things I would suggest is just like us, dogs have a sense of pride. And it's, it's, good job, good boy. So uh, when we master a new skill set, our self-esteem gets a boost. We feel better about ourselves. What I would like uh, the, the two guardians for the, uh, these dogs to do, and you guys, and you, uh, the guardian who's filming this has another dog that's at his home. Uh, we want to eventually get them all together. What I recommend is that you guys go to YouTube and look for either dog tricks or dog commands. It doesn't always have to be a trick. I have a command where I tell my dog to retreat. She gets up, takes four steps backwards, and lays back down. It's really helpful if I'm coming in the house for carrying things. So it doesn't have to be just tricks like roll over and play dead. But what I would suggest you guys do is alternate. One week you do it, next week she does it, and we're going to do this for eight weeks minimum. Twelve weeks would be even better. So you go to YouTube and you say, okay, I'm going to teach the dogs how to, how to roll over. So you look at YouTube. There will be different methods of teaching these typically. There's an old joke. If you get two dog trainers together, the only thing they'll agree on is the other guy is wrong because they think their method is the only method. Sometimes one method is going to work good for one dog and another method is going to work better for another dog in terms of instruction. So what I would do is make sure that all the dogs have the same command words. So rollover is the same for all the three dogs. And then you're going to teach each dog. Now, I would, when you're here, I would put Pistol out and work with Jaeger separately, especially because I can tell with this dynamic, he's, you're not going to get his best if she's in the room. And so we want to build his self-esteem up by helping him master new skills that he can do on command. And that will help him feel more confident. So what I would do is teach each dog, like, let's say you would learn it on sun, every Sunday. So on Sunday, you're gonna come over, you're maybe start out with your dog, teach your dog how to roll over. So it's your dog, it's a little bit easier. I would probably, for you, maybe start out with your dog. And once you get over here, you've kind of refined your technique. Then I would put Pistol outside, or work with Pistol first, and then put Jaeger, uh, bring Jaeger and put Pistol outside. So all three dogs know how to do it, and then I would have you teach the other guardian how to, the command word and the motion. And then basically that week, you guys are gonna practice that all week long with, with the dogs. So by the end of the week, they're just gathered down on autopilot. Uh, the next week, the other guardian is going to pick a trick or a command, and she's going to teach all the three dogs those commands. Now, at this point, we're going to teach them separately, obviously, because Pistol's not going to be getting along too well with your dog until we change the leader following dynamic. But by simply incre uh, giving them eight to 12 different new tricks or commands that they can do, they're going to start carrying themselves with a little bit of swagger, and that's what we want. So um, it doesn't have to be anything too elaborate. I mean, it can be easy tricks. There are tricks that are easier. There are tricks that are more difficult. If, you know, don't pick stuff that's really difficult first. Try to keep them really simple to begin with. Maybe getting the dog to come into a heel position. Maybe uh, teaching the dog to stay. Teaching the dog to stay should definitely be one of the eight or 12 things that you guys teach. Teaching your dog to stay t is very easy. There's a YouTube te uh, video. If you just search for teaching any dog the perfect stay, in the title, it'll be part one in parentheses. Um, and the guy, that's the method that I use. You first teach your dog to stay for duration. So the dog is right here, and I just have the dog to stay for longer, longer periods of time until I can get the dog to stay for five minutes. Now this is super easy because the dog's right here. Once we get up to five minutes, then I start moving away from the dog, and the dog has to stay in the position while I move away. And that's the duration, or excuse me, that's the distance. Then the last one was go for distractions. Then we do it when there's another dog around or another, uh, the TV's on or there's uh, Harley down the street. So the, we make it gradually more difficult, but just like learning to drive for us, we learn to drive in a parking lot in the easiest possible setting. Then we gradually increase the intensity of things until we get to a point where we feel confident enough about to drive in five o'clock traffic on a freeway or something along those lines. So building up uh, his confidence is gonna go a long ways towards helping the household a little bit, and also helping her. She's, a lot of dogs are sometimes dominant because uh, out of an insecurity. And if she doesn't really know a lot, all she knows is to protect and be possessive of my humans. That's, that's the primary purpose of my existence. Well, it's not a healthy way for her to be. 
Now, she is a herding breed. So these are dogs that need stronger leadership than general dogs, but we really don't have any rules for her. So she really, I think, is, I think the, the big part of, I think a big part of her problem is because the guardian has not communicated what role she needs to play and what her leadership uh, level is amongst other humans and other dogs. So we're gonna work on a lot of attacking that from a lot of different ways, but one of the things we wanna do is make sure that we build up the dog's confidence so he's not so skittish and so she feels uh, that she can impress humans through skills rather than trying to ward off other dogs.